I'm Karen Eckmeyer. I'm a fiber artist and quilter and I'd like to share with you today a technique that I just have a lot of fun with. It's called sun printing with tissue paper. Um, it's a sunny day here in Connecticut. The skies are clear, no, no clouds, so it's perfect for sun printing. Um, I wrote about this technique, if you're familiar with Quilting Arts Magazine, that was back in summer of 2006, and a lot of people have asked me, well, could you give us more details? We'd like to see it in action. So here we are. Uh, sun print starts with a sun-sensitive paint. It's called Set of Color. It's real important that you get, and I'm not sure how the company says it's Pabillo, I think it's a French company, set of color, but you want the transparent paints. There's opaque, but we want the transparent paints because those are sun sensitive. Comes in different sizes, you can see. This is the big size, medium, and this is the size that you would get in a little sample pack. So what are sun prints? How do you do a sun print? What does it do to the fabric? Um, here's a great example. Here's a non-skid grid mat. Um, if I put that on the wet fabric and I put it in, in the sun to dry, look at this wonderful grid I get. The sun, it, it, it is a resist. That's what we're doing. Here we have these fun little lizards. They were placed on the fabric and when I took it off, I had little lizards. Of course, my, I'm the Quilted Lizard Fiber Art Studio, so I would want to do that. A lot of people love to pick leaves or ferns. If we put the fern on the wet paint, once it's dry, we remove it, and it's, it, you just get this wonderful image. And a r real clear, sunny day gives you nice, crisp results. So how did the sun printing lead to sun printing with tissue paper? Well, I had learned that um, using white tissue paper, and just like the little lizard or the uh, fern that you saw, if I put it on the wet fabric, I would get all these great textures. Um, just, just really neat, the crinkly uh, look of the, of the, um, the tissue. And, and so that I was doing that for several years, and one day I ran out of white tissue paper. Uh, oh, good grief, what am I going to do? So I reached to my wrapping supplies, and I had a bunch of tissue papers, and I grabbed some of them, and it turned out that I had the tissue paper that bleeds, which turns out to be a good thing. And what happens is that when I put my tissue papers, I was just kind of doing these kind of ripped strips. The tissue paper... The colors would bleed with the paint, they would bleed with each other, and I would get these wonderful surprises of color and texture. So how do you know whether the tissue paper that you have in stock is going to work or not? Um, ideally, the paper that you have um, to wrap gifts shouldn't bleed, and it should say bleed resistant or something, or non-bleeding. That's a big advertisement because you don't want to wrap something up really nicely and then have water get on it and it'll bleed. Um, so how do we know what you have? The easiest way is to get a little bit of water, and we're going to just, I have samples of, of a couple, two different kinds of tissue paper here. And you're going to see, as I put the water on, we have the color diffusing into the paper towel. Isn't that fun? Okay. Now you can see on these, there's no, 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 nothing is... Uh oh, here we have... That one must have come from that side. That's a bleeding one. But none of these others are bleeding at all. The others are just really just going right into the fabric. That's what we want. The sure way to know that you're going to get a bleeding fabric is to get what's called the Spectra Art Tissue. It's advertised. It's called Bleeding Art Tissue. Then you know you've got the right tissue. Okay, now let's use that idea of the colored tissue paper bleeding onto fabric. And I have a couple examples here to show you. So here's an example of the 
tissue paper cut into squares and you'll notice sometimes you get in a very nice clean edge and other times uh, if there's a lot of water or depends on the tissue paper it will just lose its shape completely or you'll get a little texture. Um, here I've added some strips to it and here I've made like a little patchwork. Um, here are some other examples. On this one I've cut strips and like little confetti pieces. So we almost, it's, I was thinking garden, but it's almost an underwater scene. You get wonderful transparency. And a couple other examples here. Very abstract effect. We've cut some rectangles in there. And every now and then I see there is actually a, a piece that's still left. Um, you can leave the paper on here. They're not meant to be washed. Just want to show you a couple samples here. It's kind of addicting. You just never know what you're going to get. Again, I th that sometimes it's hard to tell whether the paper's still there or not. Here's one with the, uh, more triangles and a darker color. Wonderful purple. Here's one where I actually left this fabric on. I did it in a grid, and you'll notice here the fabrics here, or the, the tissue, and I could peel some of that away. I kind of like the look of that, um, just to see what actually happens, but I, I might, might just leave that there. Um, so we have a lot of different opportunities, um, but for today, I'm going to demonstrate doing the torn strips of fabric to create a multicolor piece. Okay, so today we're going to, or I'm going to demonstrate uh, to show you a multicolor fabric with the torn tissues, okay? And we're going to start with, I'm, I'm working on a poster board and I've cut a piece of plastic to protect the poster board so I can use it several times. And I'm using, um, I actually have two different kind of fabrics I'm going to use today. Both are by Robert Kaufman. One is a 100% cotton. It's PFD, which means it's prepared for dyeing. And the other one, and I've marked them differently, uh, just so I know which is which. This is my 100% cotton. And this is my uh, Pimatex, which is a cotton poplin. Uh, and it's a tighter weave, it's a combed cotton. So we'll see the difference between how the paint sits on these fabrics. So. I'm ready as a cook. I have my mise en place. I have all my paints ready. And so how did I go about mixing these paints? The, um, the set of color transparent paints, it, it's a concentrate in here. And so what I do, I find you'll see an array of different size containers here, um, whatever I have, and I mix it half concentrate and half water. If I want a deeper color, I might not put as much water in, I could, or I could use this straight. So that's what I've mixed here, and I've actually added even a little bit more oops, water into that. And, and it's good to have a different brush for each of your colors. So we are all set to go. First I like to, whoop, there's some tissue from another piece I did. We don't want that mixing with the others. We're going to wet the fabric first because we're getting, we're basically going for a, a watercolor effect and it will be too, obviously too dry if I don't wet the fabric. So we get it all nice and white, uh, wet. It is white. We're going to, we're going to mess with that. Okay, I have just basic colors. I have yellow, red, I have purple just because I love purple. I'm going to put that over here. Blue and green. Okay, just some basic colors. And while that is still wet, I'm going to just paint a strip of yellow down here. I want to be quick. I want to do this before it dries. And I'm going to put another, some red here. Notice this is highly scientific. Okay, we're just trying to get the color down. I might give it a little zap of water just to let it bleed. And now I've already um, torn up strips of tissue paper. And I'm going to start putting them on the wet fabric. I'm just going to 
try not to think too much about it. Just let it happen. Just kind of pick them up, see what happens. So now we're ready to take it out in the sun to dry. So let's put it in a nice sunny spot. It's all pinned down, ready to go. And look, it's all ready. We've got some neat things happening over here. So why don't we go and make another piece while that one's drying? Okay, let's try another fabric. Let's, kind of, let's think of a, a sunset, warm colors. And we're just going to use yellows and reds and maybe a little bit of purple. Now I have purple mixed already, but I want it to be a little lighter, so I'm gonna put just a smidge in another container. And there's also a set of color makes um, pearl and gold. Now these are opaque, they're not transparent. But what happens when you add the opaque pearl to a any of the colors, and now I need another brush, what you're gonna get is a lighter version. I've got a nice lavender of that purple. Now it's a little bit thick, so I'm actually going to add a little bit more water just to, so that it'll be easier to use. Okay, so I've got my red, yellow, and lavender for a really pretty, what I'm hoping, <laughs> sunset sky. One never quite knows what one will get. Okay, it's all nice and wet here. And I'm going to just kind of add the streaks of the sun here. I'm just going to kind of get it on there, sloppy like. I can I can hear the difference. This is the combed cotton. It's a, a much finer weave, and we'll see whether you see the difference in the results. Just going to add a little bit of a red. These colors will dry a lot lighter than what you see here on camera. And you'll see that later when we have the finished product. Now we're going to start to add our torn tissue papers, the pinks and the oranges and lavender. And just kind of work fairly quickly so things do not dry. Okay, we're ready to go out in the sun again. I thought while the other pieces were drying that I would show you um, what it looks like working with squares. So I've taken my tissue papers, I've uh, lined them all up so that I can cut a whole bunch of squares. And I'm gonna use my rotary. This is the pizza cutter of the quilting world. It's a, um, a round blade used for cutting fabric, but in this case we're going to cut tissue. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of one inch strips here. I'm not aiming really for precision. Oh, look at this wonderful confetti. Oh, we have some rectangles too. That's good. Okay, we're ready to play with some squares and some confetti that I made here. I'm going to start off getting our fabric wet. Okay. And maybe I'll just paint the fabric in squares, like a little square of yellow, a couple of those. Odd numbers are always good. And we'll do some... I, when I'm putting uh, my colors down, I don't think too much about color theory, but I do know that when I put yellow and red together, I will get orange. I know that if I have my blue next to my yellow, I'm going to get green. So I think of those things. Uh, we're getting with some this purple, this lavender that I have that's got the pearlescence in there. And now I'm ready to add the squares of tissue paper. Okay, again, very scientific. We're just going to put them on here. Where are my tweezers that would work? Well, we'll use fingers. Got to be quick. Okay, I found my tweezers in the meantime. And we're just going to separate these. You can see they're already mixing with each other already. Do you see that? That's amazing. They do have to work quickly. Of course, you could put them down one at a time, but I only have so much patience. 
We would just add a couple more here and there. Picking them up one at a time is probably smarter. And you see here, we really can't control what's going to happen as far as what colors go where. Because we've got an assortment of colors. I mean, I could have planned my colors, but um, this is just to give you some ideas. And we're set to go out in the sun. Let's see what we have. Oh my goodness. We've got some fun stuff going on here. Okay. Look what the confetti tissue paper did. Wow. That's fun stuff. Still a little wet, but it's okay. Remember, we had several layers, but it doesn't matter. We got a nice transparency effect with a lot of them. The tissue paper is off now, so let's look at the details. What a great explosion of colors. It looked like a mess when we had all those fabrics on, or the tissues on top of each other, but look at all these wonderful mixtures, and we've got shapes and transparencies. Oops, still have a little bit of tissue paper. You'll be finding those for a while. Oh, look, a whole bunch. Look at that. Let's check out the other one. I'll move this one aside. This is the one where I crisscrossed the strips. They're actually left some of the tissue paper in there. I like that. I've got some nice fun effects there. Um, so if I didn't say it before, these have been heat set on the reverse side with an iron and I've done that with our other pieces of fabric too. So let's take a look at those. Here's the first one that we worked on. Got all our different colors. Definitely got some mud going on there, but it's not a bad thing. And I've been doing this for many, many years, and I'm just going to bring a couple other pieces over. And you'll notice that every time I do it, it's always a little bit different. It depends on the um, tissues that I've selected. Might be the mood, the colors. Uh, sometimes I take more time with my colors, and other times I do not. And sometimes it bleeds more. Also depends on the type of day. What I'm really liking with this one picture is that I see a little scene. Actually, let me get my mat. What I'm seeing in this fabric is that I'm finding a couple abstract landscapes, very abstract. Here we've got a, a nice warm sunset sky. That's kind of an interesting part to use. And over here we have in another piece, doesn't that look like a a Blue Ridge Mountain, that was just a blue torn piece of tissue paper and a wild sky. I didn't intend to make landscape, but it did happen accidentally. Here's our sunset sky. I think this one turned out really nicely. We stayed with one color palette. We did our yellows and reds, and then we wound up with pink, but we also used pink and yellow and orange and a little bit of that lavender, uh, the strips. So I think we have a nice sunset there. While you weren't looking, I did a water fabric. I did blues and greens, and I think that's, that's quite nice. That would be fun to cut into uh, to create a landscape. The question I've asked myself, and I figure people will ask me, how color fast, how, how long will these colors last? So I did a little test. This was a piece of fabric that I painted 13 years ago. And so I took, let's see, which one? This one, I washed it, and I washed it purposely in a warm water and soap uh, instead of cold, just to see how much it would bleed or not bleed. Um, and I'm surprised. Uh, I don't see any fading of color. It all looks pretty true. So I hope I've given you a few ideas today, and I'm going to show you in the following pictures um, some of my work and how I incorporate this painted fabric with the tissue in my pieces. Here's Enchanted Village. This is a fabric collage with tissue paper sun prints. Here's a close-up. Here's Positive Energy 5. This is pieced squares with some collage triangles. Here's a close-up to get a better look. This is Miniville. 
This is a miniature fabric collage based on my Happy Villages book. This features the tissue sun prints in the border. Here's Tiny Town. This is another miniature Happy Village which uses the fabric in the sky and the water and in the borders. This is Colorific Quilters. It's part of a series of patterns that uses fused shapes and the tissue paper, some prints, are in the border. Just a perfect frame. All squared away, this is a large piece. It's fabric collage with carefully placed squares of tissue paper. On a smaller scale, we have all squared away and out of order. And last but not least, this is my chakra flower garden collage and I think the sun print fabrics was the perfect way to finish it off. Thank you so much for joining me and have fun painting with tissue paper. Bye for now.